Ellen DeGeneres. I'm sure you heard of her. Ellen has done 3,150 episodes of The Ellen Show. She has shown up five days a week for years and years and years and years and years. I'm super proud because we're on episode 569 of Hashtag Rise and Grind. We're barely at about 15% of what she's been able to do. 3,150 episodes of The Ellen Show. Oprah has done 4,561 episodes. 4,561 times she has shown up and delivered a one-hour show. 4,561 times over decades. Unbelievable. The consistency and dedication with which she has shown up. My man, Will Smith, who I've been using the law of attraction to draw, try and draw him closer to us until one day he's here on hashtag rise and a grind. But my man, Will Smith has been in 49 movies. Can you believe that? 49 different movies. We just bought uh, spies in disguise last night. That's out now. So my kids were watching that 49 movies. He's done a hundred. He did 148 episodes of the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, 148 episodes. He's been in 20, or he's made, created his own, 20 music videos. And he's written and prepared and sang 69 different songs. All three of these people, Ellen, Oprah, Will Smith, they have clearly reached super high levels of fame, success, fortune, and influence. But I don't look at all that. I look at the work. I look at the work that they've put in over the years to get to where they are today. Consistently, small, incremental actions and decisions every single day that ultimately have got them to a place where they're winning. They're winning on the consistent and on the steady because of those actions they've made over time. So all three of them. All three of them are absolute masters at their craft. When you watch them, they do what they do normally. They do it normally without fail, right? They can go out there and deliver. Ellen's quick wit and her charm is incredible. Oprah's ability to connect with people, to help move them, to help bring something out of them, to, for, to help them find that aha moment is incredible, right? Will Smith can turn it on in a heartbeat. He can make you laugh. He can get serious. He can motivate you. He can inspire you. They have a gift. They have a gift that has been earned. It's been earned over decades and decades and decades of doing the right thing, making the right decisions every single day. My friend Roddy Chong falls into that same field. Roddy Chong plays violin for the Trans-Siberian Orchestra. He also toured with Shania Twain and Celine Dion as a rock and roll violinist. And my friend Roddy Chong picked up a violin for the first time when he was two years old and has literally played every single day. He has played his violin every single day for 40 years now. Because of that, he is an absolute expert at his craft. He can play his violin behind his back he can put on an incredible rock and roll show. Roddy can do things that no other man on this planet has ever been able to do with a violin. He's absolutely phenomenal. And so I've been blessed and lucky enough to get to know him and become friends with Roddy over the last few years. He's actually going to be one of our speakers at Hustle and Grind Con, which we have rescheduled for October 12th and 13th. For those of you that maybe didn't know that. But Roddy has become an absolute expert at his craft. He can play the violin in ways that nobody else can. It's just this incredible, hardworking human being. See, they all understand, all four of them, they all four understand the long-term ramifications of their actions today. 
You see, what I'm trying to get you to understand this week is that a lead in the first quarter could be due to many things, right? Like if you're watching a horse race, right? You've got a horse race and you've got some horses that maybe jump out to the lead right out the gate, right? They jump out to the lead and that could be due to the energy. They were excited the way that they released out of the gate. They were super pumped up, right? So here they are, they're coming out and boom, they've got all that energy or or maybe they just came out of the, the they just came out of the gate, right? They just happened to come out of the gate, right? that day but what you're gonna find is that over time consistently over and over and over it is the horse with the long-term discipline that noses them out at the end every single time get away little bruce comes back western rules comes back absolutely dylan is back in fourth and skip the scales is a few lengths down but skip the scales is still Staying on now, having struggled before the turn in. Little Bruce, very clumsy at the final fence. This is slow motion stuff. Little Bruce, here comes Skip the Scales. Would you believe it? Skip the Scales was going nowhere half a mile back. And Skip the Scales has won it. Little Bruce second. An amazing one-two for Philip Kirby. Back in third, Western rules. And absolutely Dylan and Knock Robin. You notice Skip the Scales was the favorite. He was the favorite, and though he was behind the entire race, he had the discipline. He had the discipline to continue to do what he needed to do until ultimately he was able to nose out the entire pack right there at the end. John Maxwell talks about this best. He talks about this theory of five, the rule of five. And I'm going to, I could explain it to you, um, but I think I'm going to let him do it for you instead. I'm going to now, I'm going to illustrate, I'm going to illustrate the intentional life by telling you just a very simple story of, of the rule of five, okay? If I, have in my, if I have in my backyard a tree that I want to cut down, okay? And if I have an axe to cut it down, if, if I'll go out and pick up that axe and if I go to that tree and just swing five times, Put the axe down. Next day, go right back out, pick up the very same axe, go to the very same tree. Five times. Put the axe down. Next day, go out in the backyard, pick up the axe, go to the very same tree, and I'm just swinging every time, just five times. Not 50 times, not 500 times, every day. Pick up the axe, same tree, five times, every day. Just five times, every day. It's called the rule of five. Let me ask you a question. If I every day go out in the backyard, pick up the axe, go to the very same tree, and swing five times, what's eventually going to happen to that tree? Eventually that tree will... That's exactly right. You don't have to be brilliant to figure this out. This is not theory. Now, if it's a big tree, and I'm only swinging five times a day, to be honest with you, it may take two or three years to knock that tree down. If it's a small tree, it may take... It, it, I'm not talking about how long it is going to take. I'm just saying to you that if you take, pick up the axe and you go to the same tree, and every day you go to that tree and you swing five times with that axe, eventually that tree will fall down. It's called the rule of five. And here's what we learn from this incredible principle, because this is life-changing. This is all about being intentional with your life. So my question that I want to ask you today is which tree are you swinging at? Do you even know? Are you swinging at just one tree or, or maybe you're swinging at too many trees? What's up, Wayne Self? How are you? What's up, Sean Hayes? Maybe you're swinging at too many trees. Because see, if you go out and you swing five times on one tree and then five times on another tree and then five times on another tree and then five times on another tree and five times on another tree and five times on another tree, then ultimately none of those trees are going to fall. You see, the rule of five only works when it's focused, when it's dialed in. Sometimes it might take, if it's a small tree, it might take you a week 
at five swings a day. Or maybe it takes you a month at five swings a day. Or maybe it takes you six months at five swings a day. And if it's a big tree, maybe it takes you three years at five swings a day. Or maybe it takes you six years or 10 years at five swings a day. But ultimately, the key is that we got to go out there and do those five swings a day on the same tree at the same spot every single day. That's how we become an expert. That's how we win the long game. That's how we don't just have a lead in the first quarter, but we actually can get through the finish line to win the race. What are you swinging at? Are you focused? Are you consistent? Listen, my friends, every day I write. Every single day I write. I am a writer. I love to write. I create content. Every day I write. It's one of my trees. Every day. So people ask me, they say, Glenn, how do you come up with a new episode of Rise and Grind every single day? How are you able to come up? Like, what the heck do you, how can you talk for 30 minutes every single day, Monday through Friday, 569 episodes? How do you do that? It's because every day I write. Every day. So writing just becomes something that I do. It becomes natural. My ability to speak. Every day I speak. Every day. Every day I speak. Every day I speak with intention and with purpose. Whether it be in a video that I post on social, whether it be here on hashtag Rise and Grind, whether it be in training with 800% club members, training with my uh, Carter Myers automotive team, training with my goalkeepers. Every day. Every day I speak. That's one of my things. Every day I study. Every day I read. Every single day. And every day I pray. You see, those are my five. I have, I have five areas of my life that I focus on. Every day I read, every day I write, every day I study, every day I pray, every day I speak. Every day I read, every day I write, every day I pray, every day I study, every day I speak. And I know that over time, if I stay consistent with those actions and those decisions, ultimately it's going to help get me across the finish line. What are your five? What are the things that you're swinging that ax at five times every single day? Are they focused? Are they dialed? Is there too many? Do you not have one? We got to figure that out. I've been bringing up Scooter, uh, Scooter Braun a lot this week because I really, I really appreciated what he had to say at Hustle and Grind Con or at 10X Growth Con. And so I think I might have shared this uh, in one of my, I can't remember if I talked about it in one of my trainings or if I talked about it here on Rising Grind, I really can't remember. But it's really, really important, so it doesn't matter. So I'm going to share it with you again today. So Scooter shared a story while he was on the stage. He said, just imagine, he was talking about success and why only so few people actually tap into success. And here's what Scooter said. He said, imagine if they announced on television that if you go down to the baseball field and you hit a home run, they'll give you a million dollars. He said, if they made that announcement, there would be four types of people. The first type of people would be the person that would say, you know what? I'm not going down there. I'm not doing that. It's going to be a zoo. There's going to be a ton of people down there. Forget it. I'm really not interested. This is a scam. I can't hit a home run anyway. I'm not going. That's one type. He said the second type of person will actually go down there. They'll actually go down to the ball field. They'll be thinking, oh my gosh, I could really use a million dollars. It would change my life dramatically. And so they'll actually go down to the ball field. And then when they get down to the ball field, they'll see this long line, this super long line of people that are waiting to go in and swing. And they may stand in line for just a little bit. But after standing in line for an hour or two, they go, you know what? Man, it's going to take, it's going to take me, a, it's going to take days. For me to get in there and then by the time i get in there you know i'm probably going to swing and i'm not probably not going to hit a home run and so it's it's just not worth it you know what i'm going to go home and so the second type of person shows up for just a little bit but they underestimated how long it was actually going to take and so they quit and they give up now the third type of person waits in the line 
They wait in the line for however long it takes to get their opportunity for success. They stay in the line for hours, maybe even days. And then ultimately, once they get up to the plate and it's their turn and the pitch comes and they swing and they don't connect or they connect, but they don't hit a home run. And then the person behind them is like, okay, all right, you, you got, you, you tried, you didn't, you didn't get it. You need to move, move out of the way. And there's people cheering or people in front of them that are like, yeah, see, told you so, told you you couldn't do it. This whole thing's a scam, right? And that third person takes one swing, one try. When they fail, they move on. They move on either encouraged by the people behind them to just forget it, give up, you're done. Or encouraged by the people in front of them who said, see, I told you it'll never happen. He said the fourth type of person, the fourth type of person sees the opportunity, sees the potential for success, waits in the line as long as they have to wait, is determined to get up there and swing that bat. And when they get up to play, they swing and they swing and they swing because there was no rule that said you could only swing once. The rule was you got to hit one out of the park. And as they continue to swing and swing and swing, there's jeers from the crowd. People continue to tell them, you're never going to do it. It's never going to happen. Get out of the way. It's not for you. It's not. But they just swing and they swing and they swing and they swing. And over time, they continue to develop the hand-eye coordination. They continue to develop the skills. They continue to develop the strength in their muscles and their arms to where they just keep swinging and swinging and swinging and swinging and swinging for as long as it takes until ultimately they connect they knock one out of the park and that my friends that my friends is the definition of long-term success that's how you get across the finish line you just keep swinging listen this is your life no matter where you go there you are so I challenge you to become the person that you want to spend the rest of your life with. You only live this season once. I want you to go out there and make it great. Listen, if you need more videos like this, you can go to glennlundy.com. That's right. If you need some rise and grind gear, like these awesome hoodies that are perfect this time of year, you can go get those at glennlundy.com. But most importantly, do me a favor. Will you come back here again tomorrow morning at 5.30 a.m.? Because we're going to do this all over again on Hashtag Rise and Grind with my dear friend, Miss Marley Jacks. Super excited to introduce her to you. Have an incredible day, friends. Have an incredible day. And just keep swinging.